Three billion dollars. It's a lot of money. That's about how much Elon Musk spent to become the majority shareholder in Twitter, or how much it would cost to buy the most expensive house for sale in the US, 10 times. But that's not what we're talking about. Nearly three billion dollars is about what the Yankees have spent on players since 2009. 2,778,055,295 if you're keeping track. That's nearly 200 million per season on average for 13 years. The Yanks have done it by handing out some massive contracts to big name players, like Garrett Cole at 9 years 324 million, Masahiro Tanaka at 7 years 155 million, and Jacoby Ellsbury at 7 years 153 million. It adds up. But so must all those titles the team won during that period, right? Not exactly. How many championships did the Yankees exactly win during this $3 billion spending spree? Zero. That's right, absolutely zero. A giant World Series goose egg. How on earth did they manage that? Let's dive in. First, let's rewind. 2009, the new Yankee Stadium is unveiled. Hal and Hank Steinbrenner officially take over for their father, George, and go on an off-season spending spree, bringing in free agents like CeCe Sabathia, AJ Burnett, and Mark Teixeira. And it pays off. The Yankees win the World Series, beating the Philadelphia Phillies four games to two. It was their first title in nine years, and the 27th title in franchise history, the most ever for baseball teams. The Bronx Bombers are back. Then, the drought sets in. It's now been 13 years since the Yankees even appeared in the Fall Classic, let alone won it. That's the third longest drought in franchise history. The 2010s were also the first decade since the 1910s that the Yankees did not even appear in the Fall Classic. So how and why did this happen? First, I'd like to start with a brief breakdown of Yankees baseball in the almost 15 years since their World Series victory, year by year. But before we get more into that, I want to take a second to talk about today's sponsor, Aura. As a creator, I've been the target of password theft and hacking attempts multiple times in the past, which created a fear that's only recently been diminished by using Aura's security features. You see, Aura protects you from scammers and hackers by scanning the dark web, where criminals sell stolen information, looking for your emails, passwords, and social security numbers. It does the same thing with near real-time alerts on suspicious credit inquiries, like if someone was opening a loan or credit card in your name. Aura also has a VPN service that makes browsing safe and untrackable. Maybe you already have apps that do all these things separately, but with Aura, you get the features of all of them in one package deal. And guess what? Along with their superior services, Aura is extremely affordable in comparison to competitors, with an average of 63% savings relative to the market. Additionally, if you sign up right now using my link in the description, pinned comment, or by clicking this QR code, Aura will give you a two-week free trial. You'll be shocked at how much of your information Aura finds exposed over those two weeks. Again, click the link or the QR code to start your free trial today. Now, back to our video. The Yankees' 2010 campaign to defend their title was a memorable one. Alex Rodriguez hit his 600th career home run, becoming the youngest player in history to do so. Shortstop Derek Jeter passed Babe Ruth in the all-time hits list when he collected his 2,874th hit. The Yankees won 95 games, good enough for second place in the AL East and a wild card berth. Things were looking good but the Yankees ran into a talented Texas Rangers team in the ALCS, and their bid to repeat as champions was ended. In 2011, the Yankees picked up right where they left off with another valiant attempt to reignite their dominant dynasty. They won 97 games and the AL East title. There were even more memorable, iconic moments, including Derek Jeter's 3,000th hit, a home run, and Mariano Rivera's record-setting 602nd career save. But this time, they faltered in the division series against the Detroit Tigers, losing a heartbreaking deciding Game 5 at home. Longtime catcher Jorge Posada would retire, and the Bombers went back to the Bronx licking their playoff wounds. Maybe next year would be different. But 2012 was not different. Again, the Yankees won 95 games in the AL East title. They beat the Orioles in five games in the ALDS and earned a rematch with the Detroit Tigers. And this time, the Tigers again prevailed, sweeping the Yanks in four games after a playoff-ending injury to Derek Jeter in the ALCS opener. Ouch, literally and metaphorically. The pain only got worse in 2013. The Yankees stumbled to third place in the AL East, winning just 85 games, their worst record since 1992. They failed to make the playoffs for just the second time in 19 years. It was a pretty mediocre send-off for longtime Yankees legends Mariano Rivera and Andy Pettit, who retired at season's end. Pretty bad, huh? but it got worse. Before the 2014 season, the increasingly desperate Yankees went on a spending spree to replace some of their departed legends, signing Jacoby Ellsbury to that seven-year, $153 million contract, as well as Carlos Beltran for three years and $45 million, Brian McCann for five years and $85 million, and Japanese star pitcher Masahiro Tanaka for seven years and $155 million. 
And what did they get in return? 84 wins and a second straight season where they failed to even make the playoffs. Fans bid farewell to team captain Derek Jeter and look forward to the future with trepidation. 2015 saw a ray of hope. The Yankees returned to the playoffs as a wild card team after finishing second in the AL East. But it was a short lived playoff run. The upstart Houston Astros dominated the Bronx Bombers in the AL wild card game, eliminating them 3 0. It would be the first of several painful losses to the Astros in years to come. 2016 saw the beginning of the so called Baby Bombers youth movement, including catcher Gary Sanchez, who hit 20 home runs in his first 53 games. But the Yankees bid farewell to Alex Rodriguez and Mark Teixeira, and also to playoff contention, failing for the third time in four years to make the playoffs while finishing fourth in the AL East. For the first time in years, the Yankees were sellers at the trade deadline, dealing away veterans like Carlos Beltran, Andrew Miller, and Yvonne Nova for a collection of prospects, as well as prime offseason acquisition Aroles Chapman. It was time for the team and GM Brian Cashman to rebuild. Of course, it's easier to rebuild with a $200 million payroll, and the Yankees signed some high-priced veterans before the 2017 season, including signing formerly departed Aroldis Chapman to a five-year $86 million deal, the largest contract ever for a relief pitcher up to that point. But the real story of that season was the breakup performances of talented young players who the Yankees had homegrown, like pitcher Luis Severino and outfielder Aaron Judge, who led the American League with 52 dingers in his rookie season and finished second in MVP voting. The Yankees won 91 games and were back in the playoffs, ousting the Minnesota Twins in the wild card game before defeating the Cleveland Indians in the division series. The Yankees again faced their new nemesis, the Astros, in the 2017 ALCS, losing in seven games to the controversial eventual World Series champions. 2018 saw more change with the departure of longtime manager Joe Girardi and the arrival of Aaron Boone. The Yankees won 100 games with their core of young stars and rekindled their old rivalry with the Boston Red Sox, first during an ugly April brawl and later during the AL Division Series, which the Red Sox won in four games. The Yankees were good, but the Red Sox proved to be better. In 2019, the Yankees won a whopping 103 games and the American League East Division title for the first time since 2012. They swept the Minnesota Twins in the AL Division Series and again faced the Houston Astros in the ALCS. Was this the year the pinstripes would finally get by the Astros and return to the World Series? No. A decade without a pennant or championship was punctuated by a heartbreaking walk-off loss in Game 6 in which the Astros again sent the Yankees packing. The Yankees started the pandemic-shortened 2020 season with a bang, winning 16 of their first 22 games. Then things went south, way south. They lost 15 of their next 20 and ended up finishing in second place, good enough for a wildcard berth. But after defeating the Indians in the wildcard series, they were defeated in five games by the upstart Tampa Bay Rays in the AL Division Series. It was yet another disappointing year to forget. The 2021 season had some great moments, including Corey Kluber's no-hitter in May, and the Yankees turning not one, not two, but three triple plays. The team, however, finished third in the AL East with 92 victories, earning yet another wildcard berth. But again, they ran into a better Red Sox team, which handed them their fifth consecutive playoff exit. The 2022 season is one that Yankees fans will not soon forget. It was a historic season for Aaron Judge, who hit an AL record 62 home runs. And, powered by Judge, the team got off to an incredible start. By early July, they were 61-23 and 23 and on pace to win 118 games. Then, for yet another season, the team fell off a cliff in the second half. They managed to still win the AL East and defeat the Cleveland Guardians in the AL Division Series before entering the ALCS with a chance to win their first pennant in over a decade against, you guessed it, the Houston Astros. Would the fourth time finally be the charm? Not even close. The Astros swept the Yankees in four games before heading off to win yet another World Series title. Whew, there you have it. 13 years, zero titles, with almost $3 billion spent. So why haven't the high-priced Yankees ever gotten over the hump? Well, I've got a few theories. Theory number one, too many injuries. The Yankees have suffered an unusually high number of injuries over the last few years. Some of these were just freak ones, like Jeter's broken ankle, but most were not. In 2019, the Yankees set a major league record 30 players to the injured list. After that, they overhauled their training staff, but yet again in 2020 and 2021 they were beset by injuries, including a remarkably high number of hamstring and back injuries. So are the team's training staff and the training schedules to blame, or is something else going on? Another theory is that the Yankees' analytics-driven front office has preferred strong, oversized sluggers who are good at hitting home runs and drawing walks over smaller, more athletic ball players. This method may create more runs, but it could also add players to your roster who are more injury-prone. Theory number two, 
undervaluing prospects. The Yankees farm system has produced an incredible number of young prospects over the past 13 years, including Aaron Judge, Gary Sanchez, Gleyber Torres, and Luis Severino. But the fact that the Yankees' high payroll allows management to plug and play hired gun veterans more than other teams means that the team's prospects often spend too long languishing in the minor leagues while they wait for the shot. Observe Cliff Frazier. This can mean that the Yankees often have several talented young ball players who are too good to trade, but not quite good enough to play over an established big leaguer. And as a result, the young talent gets overcooked in the minors, wasting valuable early years and impeding development. Theory number three, a toxic fan culture. The fans at Yankee Stadium are notoriously hard on visiting players. Earlier this season, they pelted Cleveland players with bottles, cans, and debris from the right field bleachers. But Yankees fans are also hard on their own players. And the team's struggles over the past 13 years have only made the fans more frustrated and the atmosphere worse. Even Aaron Judge was booed in the playoffs just days after setting an American League home run record. Wow. Such a toxic culture can deter free agents from coming to the Bronx, and it can place incredible pressure on young ball players still eager to develop their talent. Coupled with the aforementioned few chances for young minor leaguers, and you don't exactly have the optimal formula for success. Theory number four, a curse? This one's kind of a joke, but I'd love to talk about it anyway. The Yankees are not a bad team, remember, by any stretch. They may have not won a championship in the past 13 years, but they've certainly been more competitive than most teams. They've made the playoffs for six consecutive years now, and despite not winning a title during the 2010s, they were arguably the best team of the decade, having the most wins at 921 and the highest run differential of plus 1,088 of any team during that period, including the Dodgers and the Astros. So is the lack of championship just bad luck, random chance? or is, as I mentioned it before, a curse. Both the Cubs and Red Sox fans have famously endured their own so-called curses, but if the Yankees are truly suffering from a curse, what caused it? One possible source, the boss, George Steinbrenner. The longtime Yankees owner presided over a whopping seven World Series titles and 11 American League pennants. Steinbrenner passed away in 2010, just months after the Yankees won the World Series, which they've not sniffed since. The notoriously insufferable and spiteful boss have placed a curse on the Yankees' management from the great beyond to ensure that any Yankees team not under his leadership will be destined to never clutch the championship trophy, no matter how much money they spend. Again, this one's mostly a joke, but hey, gotta love a good curse. So, what have we learned? Over the past 13 years, the Yankees have spent an obscene amount of money and gotten very little in return. And their fans are, shall we say, not very happy about it. The good news? The future of the organization is still bright. For one thing, they have yet another boatload of talented young ballplayers in their system, including infield prospects Oswald Peraza and Anthony Volpe, a shortstop many are hoping will be the club's next Derek Jeter. We'll see. The team has also spent $360 million to re-sign Judge for nine years, and another $162 million on pitcher Carlos Rodon. So once again, the Yankees should be good in 2023, but will it be enough? It's hard to know. But there's one thing we can predict. Money will definitely be no object. Thanks for watching. Have a great day everyone and make sure to click on this playlist for other essay videos just like this.